Hello and good morning. Welcome to another episode of Cinnamon Chat with Nethila. And today we have a very special guest. But before I get to that, I'd like to say that my name is Nethila. I'm 14 years old and I'm the founder and CEO of Masspreneurs. And today our special guest is Dr. Sayandan. And he is a veteran in the healthcare industry with over 32 years of experience. He's currently serving as the Chief Executive Officer of Sunshine Medical Services and Lena Manufacturing. But before joining Sunshine Healthcare, Dr. Sayandan has had various leadership roles at multinational and large scale healthcare companies and he's also a distinguished toastmaster dtia and a yoga sh- uh, ceremony so without further ado i'll be bringing him onto the show hello sir Hi Nathila how are you Hi thank you how are you I'm good as always So I have a lot of interesting questions prepared for you because I'm sure I have a lot to learn from you and the audience also has a lot to learn from you so without further ado I'd like to know about your childhood you know your family you uh, what you did when you were my age Okay so that's interesting so generally those are the sweetest days of your life and for me I don't know whether bitter or call it a bitter sweet but that gave me the kick start of my life because uh, I was born in 1971 and uh, we were together so it was my parents my sister I have a sister and a brother who are elder to me so we were all living in Kandy we precisely we were staying at Hantana my father was at TRIT research institute uh, we stayed together and at the age of 11 years uh, that was 1983 precisely 40 years ago uh, maybe you were not born and you would have heard we had these um, I don't know to call it communal riots or riots or whatever it is we were disturbed they had the 1983 black july Uh, sometimes I call it the curse of the Black July, which also gave me the kickstart. And due to that, we were victims of that 1983 riots. And at the age of 11, uh, I had to stay in a refugee camp. So we had to save our lives. The the primary thing was to save our lives. So we saved our lives that night where we were attacked. And five, the following day, we went to the refugee camp. Two weeks were there. And my father went on a call to UK. Uh, my mother got displaced. My brother got into the... university my sister went to katabad the the five five of us who were like one nest in a bird's nest we got split into different places and from the age of 11 i started to be alone where i had to take care of myself i felt that was the beginning of the blessing in disguise uh, which took a positive side of my life so that was the childhood i remember uh, which helped me to go where i want to where i am today hmm. So even though it wasn't what you were hoping for, it has shaped you into the person you are today. Absolutely. So no regrets at all. At that age, I would have cried. I would have had sad feelings. I miss my parents. But today I have no regrets. That shaped me to who I am. And because at the young age, I realized I'm left alone and you've got to drive your way through. It helped me to come out of the shelf early in my life. especially taking care of myself so you were able to get that lesson at a young age itself that you had to figure it out on your own and you had to do something to get your life in order okay yes and so, I, i had no choice i was pushed into that i had no choice it was not an option given i was pushed into the corner so i had to come out of it hmm. so back when you were going to school were you like a studious child getting straight a's or were you a backbencher i think i would say i would be in between i was definitely not studious so if i was i started my schooling at trinity college candy So there again I'll see how these events helped. So at Trinity I was like my rank was 13, 14, 15, 12. Those were the ranks when I was in school. Then the 1983 riots as I told what happened because of that I went to also refugee as a school to send Michaels as a refugee status. So there I was staying with my uncle for a period of one year where his children were studious. They were bright sparks. So when I did the same exam, the government exam there being a refugee going to a government school St Michaels it's the same paper and i saw they getting more marks gave me a kick start hey what the hell are you doing so that gave me a immediate benchmark uh, when i was 12 13 that 12 i was 12 years so i started studying and need to come out now that kick start when i came back to candy at the age of 14 or 15 uh, i continued at st anthony's college candy then i was little bit started concentrating where if you just ask my results o level then it was distinction so i got four distinctions and four credits and a level i came up to even the rank of 2 so tell you at the a level the person who be uh, first in the class became a doctor and the person who came second in the class that's me became a medical representative so that right stands <laughs> <laughs> okay wow uh, that is a very it's like a big comeback for you know from going yes. from 12 to second in a levels So I I see after that you have gone to work as a category manager at GSK. Absolutely right. 
So as I told now, my 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 person who came first got the marks adequate to enter the university because those days in 1990 it was state university. Today, I mean, there were no, there weren't much uh, global options available, which is available for a current kid in Sri Lanka today. Today there are so many options. All after A level, after O level, yeah. one could pursue the career. So those days it was limited, and and invariably the choices left were either you become an engineer, you become a doctor or a lawyer. So as I told the person, the my friend who came first in the class entered the university for medicine. And for me, though, even though I uh, got through all four subjects, it was not adequate enough. So I remember my father's strong wording. He always say, after twenty, son, either you should study, meaning it's the uh, the the graduation or the higher degree, or you should start working. So since I, it was not enough, I thought of I start working. So as early as 19 years, I joined uh, Glaxo as a medical representative. Actually, I rose up to a category manager. It was at the age of 28 I became a category manager. I joined as a medical representative at the age of 19 uh, because that was my choice uh, to work and start uh, working and then study whatever possible. Okay, so there's a lot more to it. So you had to work your way up to a category manager. Absolutely. So I joined in 19 years as a medical representative. So working hard was a given choice. I mean, at that stage, my parallel, the friends were partying. They were going for uh, cinemas. They were going on ah. trips. They were doing all that. For me, it was not an option. Hey, guy, you didn't enter the university, and I come from a family of graduates. My father is an entomologist. He's a graduate. My mother is a botany teacher. She's a botany specialist. My sister is an architect. Brother is an engineer. And here I am, 19 years going as a medical rep. I need to match up. That was in back of my head. So I had to work hard to grow myself in my career. And back of my mind, I also had to study. So I started as a medical rep. Started working hard. Uh, I became a hospital coordinator. I'm just telling the first ten years up to twenty nine years. So I started as a medical rep. Became a hospital coordinator. Became a product executive. And what made me a product executive in addition to work was I knew I didn't have the background of education. So I need to do something which is uh, equivalent to a degree. So I took something relevant. So then the choices were slim: Sri Lanka Institute of Marketing or Charter Institute of Marketing. at that time for some reason charter insurance marketing was more recognized so i chose to do sim and i didn't have the money i was studying out of my own money i did only two subjects at a time for two reason a the money was not enough to do all four together b uh i had to ensure that i get through the two subjects and unlike sima sim gave an option you can do two subject at a time or one subject at a time so i did two at a time within 3 years i completed the whole sim so when i was working hard producing results on the other side when i got qualified uh that gave me the first promotion as a product manager or product executive at glaxo then later became a brand manager when the glaxo smith kline merged and then with the merger it also gave a broader portfolio where i became a category manager so that was my first 10 years starting as a medical rep and going up to category manager in the 10 years of my glaxo career so going to management level is not the, not an easy task there's a long process to it no absolutely absolutely not easy but it's possible and and uh, never impossible so if a guy like me a drop out to uni can get it there why no one else can cannot is my question so it's always a possible task but you got to work you need to be committed and hard work is there's no shortcut for hard work so now you are the ceo of two different organizations today right yes so do you use your selling skills that you've gained from your previous experiences as a ceo absolutely for me since i come from a selling background or i would say even communication adel a lot selling is something you do throughout the day now while speaking to the audience i need to sell myself i need to give my yeah. ideas i need to convince you go for an interview you sell yourself I mean, there'll be so many coming. There'll be ten people coming for interview. If you don't sell yourself to that interview panel, they are not going to buy you. Mean that mean what I mean is, uh, they, if they're to recruit, they need to convince of you. Tomorrow, from a promotion, your name goes up, and if you are not sold yourself adequately through your performance, through your competencies, you are not going to sell. For that matter, tomorrow uh, you want to, if it's a proposal. And then there's a bridegroom coming or a bride coming to see you. If you don't sell yourself, that marriage is not going to thrive. <laughs> so lifelong selling works, and you need to sell and convince. So yes, I use selling, and I feel that's an important part of element until the last day is my firm belief. Hmm, I agree. So when working as a country manager for ten years, what kind of challenges have you faced? So that was my second part of my life. So up to twenty nine, I became a category manager. Then yeah. I felt I'm getting stuck there. So I joined from Glaxo. I joined Hamas as a country manager. So for my growth, 
So going there, my number one challenge when I joined Hemas, it was a new company, new culture, and the whole Sri Lankan responsibility. Now Glaxo was a well-established company, process-driven. Everything was there. Not that Hemas was bad. Hemas was equally a good working environment. But the difference was the whole responsibilities in yours. And here I got an underperforming agency. I didn't know the 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 one month sale value was the one whole year value of the two companies I took over. That was a big shock when I joined Hemas. But I thought, hey, I'm going to give. And B, when I joined, the whole team resigned for some reason. So I took that as a blessing in disguise, and I it was a whole new team. And and even though my designation was country manager, I said, hey, I'm going to go on the field. Let's develop this sale. So little by little, the sales started increasing. So the biggest challenges were: you're totally responsible. You're left alone. You're responsible for the PNL. You got to deliver results. Otherwise, the principals overseas who have appointed Hemas as a distributor for these global MNC agents. they will not be happy with the results they will pull out or they will say change the country manager so my biggest challenge was performance and in this case it's not me i had to utilize the team so first time i got exposed to handling team though i didn't use the best of management practices i mean during 29 to 39 i still say i was like a hitler i was very aggressive very authoritarian just to get results because i was on fire i had to prove myself and i went and it worked i mean i always say i i, I the the elegant one of the immenses which i took over which had 11% market share when i left at the age of 40 at hemas it grew to 54% market share the 27 million business grew to 800 million so i had to show results of course i utilized those which i see as wrong methods now uh, i was very authoritarian very aggressive and those were the challenges and these are why work came and ultimately the results came and and those global multinational agencies were performing very well i see so again working as a country manager is also not an easy thing you know i used to think it's Nothing easy to easy. be a man to go to management level is easy i used to think to be a manager is easy just tell them to do this tell them to do that but on the back side <laughs> behind the scenes there's a lot no i would say nathila the higher you go up your seat become hotter and hotter and more temporary it becomes because the reason is when you go to the top and there are more people your responsibility increase and your dependency increase and it's a very few so though outside it looks and flashy of course good salary good perks all that comes that's what the rest of the world sees but also you have a greater responsibility greater performance so there's a good and the bad side yeah, for me higher you go up i it hotter it hotter becomes. the seat gets <laughs> Yes. Okay. So then you started working at uh, as a CEO at uh, Sunshine Healthcare, right? You became a CEO of Sunshine Healthcare. Uh, Eventually, there's a little bit of uh, yeah. There's a little bit of tweak there. So okay, I was a country manager. Then I went to Hemas. So ten years I was a country manager, and it's a very comfortable position, right? At Hemas, my colleagues they retire as a country manager. So here I am at the age of nineteen. I told myself, hey, I need to grow up. So I need to become a CEO or a managing director. Was my personal vision I had in my mind. So. Mm-hmm. at that time the at that t- time when i hit 40 at that time legally the retirement age was 55 years so i had another 15 years more to go so i thought am i going to retire as a country manager or i want to grow so i felt i was a person who was chasing growth uh, from the day i started working so i thought i'm not going to stop and i had this dream of becoming a ceo so before coming to sunshine There was a head hunter at that that's the time. Delmage was purchased by Valuable One, and Valuable One Delmage came under that, and they had the healthcare sector with the uh, more of equipment and little bit of uh, other specialty products, pharmaceutical products with them, and they were looking for a uh, CEO. And the head hunter called me and said, "Hey, there's a position. Would you like to come?" And and uh, the, the the chairman of Valuable One is looking for somebody who is established in the industry. so they wanted the best but i know delmage was not a healthcare company in the industry and not not the place compared to the places i worked but still i took the challenge and joined just to get that designation methil nothing else just to become a ceo i took that chance at the age of 40 i thought time is up i'm going to take it i need to live my vision i took that so four years i worked there since i took that break I was able to shift myself to Sunshine, which is another blue chip and a, the number two leading healthcare company in Sri Lanka. So since I took that move, I firmly believe. Otherwise, I don't know from him as I would have got this CEO position here. Since I took that gamble over, took that risk and went over there. Four years I was there, and I made a, a, a non-profit making entity, a profitable entity. Got established. We even established the medical devices. I became the president of the chamber of medical devices, which gave a lot of visibility in the industry. 
and those good work helped me to move here and that's how i came to sunshine nithila to answer your question so we have a comment here from okay. uh, tharindra kalpage listening and loving what i hear so far thank okay. you thank you so that's how you got into sunshine healthcare right that's how you got into them yes, as a ceo absolutely yes and now what skills and what qualities actually helped you become the ceo there so when you are a ceo it's a different ball game altogether i told you when i was a country manager i used very authoritarian showing results showing profit establishing sales growth were the key one moment i got into the ceo shoes i found your team became larger so as a country manager if 20 reported to me as a ceo i had 100 plus so when you have 100 plus you got to change your style and you also see in your room the managers you get senior managers reporting to you as a ceo and invariably you'll find there are people who know more than you so you got to handle people who are senior senior by experience people who know their area best than you so at that time i knew i need to manage them change my leadership style so slowly and steadily after 40 from a authoritarian style i had to shift to more of a situational leadership because different people had different threshold their knowledge were at different levels it's all about getting things done and for me one word is that leadership so as a ceo it's the leadership skill matters and you getting things or harnessing the best out of that intellectual property of a human being which has the human capital i would call it was the key so if i can Uh, establish the leadership so i would say leadership is the key skills needed to perform as a ceo and that's what one will take uh, take uh, you one higher for you to perform as a ceo so leadership skills is the like the center of it all that connects everything no absolutely so leadership skills are needed at it would every level every but huh? at the higher level when you have a big team i told 100 plus then that is given i mean there's no choice i don't think any other formula will work okay if you don't have it still you may survive but for you to be successful for you to be perform for your team to be happy uh, do multiple things you need to do when you are there so all this to click i mean on one side you have to show profits one side the sale has to go on the other side the employee has to be happy uh, they have to be motivated they need to grow so all these put in a bag I think only the leadership skills can uh, help one individual where you need to be sharp on those skills. And uh, from a young age, we uh, kids who have been doing becoming prefects, cricket captains, they have been developing their leadership skills from then itself. Absolutely, those are blessing in disguise. You won't believe it, Tilab. When people come for interviews, one of the key question. I I believe in seeing everyone. But the question before somebody is recruited, I I prefer to have a chat. Uh, not maybe some call it the final interview but for me it's more of a formal chat one of the question i ask is have you done sports so people wonder well, sometimes the interview panel asks why are you asking is called sports or not you are precise you are spot on when you are that you feel that calamity i mean that that recession but we went under last year it's like you ro- lose five matches in a row it's like a recession situation you go bonkers and some people i mean see you lose five wickets for the first 10 runs and you got to score 200 runs put the captain on the spot what decision are you taking how you are going to manage so those are situation we feel practically in organization so when you get used to mentally how to handle it helps those leadership you are spot on i mean even as a right. prefect the whole school go berserk in an assembly and the monitor is supposed to control the class or a prefect is supposed to manage the school gives you that skill early uh, but it comes in different forms and directions yeah so being a leadership is an important thing when it comes to going to ceo level and management level leadership is needed not only there everywhere leadership is a key skill everywhere. absolutely i would say even if you have to be a good father a good family member if you have to bring children your leadership is needed if you are a good religious if you are the pastor or the priest of the church or the seminary or a religious place you need leadership so leadership is needed everywhere Uh, and uh, not forgetting the thing i don't want to say even inside the parliament but we need is leadership to take our country through and pass it so leadership is needed everywhere and that's one of what's going to take us through if you are to be successful so how can one acquire these skills to become a ceo so i would say it's very easy not very difficult b a some of the leadership skills are you need to take responsibility you need to be honest so these are some of the things for me uh, honesty integrity being true to yourself is one of the key thing a leadership skill one needed be one need to be committed at what you are doing so if so i always say when i recruit people in my team or if i have somebody in my team if you ask me if people ask what do you want what are the two things that you are looking for in a person i said only two things a honesty and integrity b commitment i say if these two are there 
one can go sky is the limit because rest i can give knowledge i can give experience i can give so in addition to this when you start working you gain skills then with experience it becomes competency with all this put together then you grow in your leadership journey so the other key aspects which i may see in our country which is lacking to be a good leader is the communication people need to yeah. communicate when people don't communicate it's a very important skill as a leader you need to communicate you need to communicate to inspire communicate to motivate so pass the message sometimes the top the message is on the top it doesn't go down so you need to communicate so these are some of the essential i don't want to go the, the top, top leadership skills may run into 10 but i would limit to the top 3 like the the honesty and integrity be i would say the commitment to do thing being passionate committed to do i want to do i want to grow and see communicate and let me stop it at those that three which can take one individual to greater heights in a leadership journey i mean it's not rocket science it's very easy yeah no it's uh, those basic skills that you advance with your experience then you're good enough a- absolutely but all that has to come from you this can't be given by your papa mama or appachi or tati or ammi or you have to realize it by yourself your exactly company cannot give you so hr together with their appointment letter can't put integrity and commitment in their letter and give it has to come from you your father can wake you today morning at 8 o'clock but tomorrow you need to be committed hey your father was waking up at 6 o'clock but if i'm commitment committed my commitment will wake me at 5 a.m look at the read the 5 am club of uh, 5 am club book of robin sharma he says when the right rest now. of the world very good super <laughs> so when the rest of the world sleeps at 6 am you are getting at 5 and that one hour can give you so much of extra in your life and what big you figure advantage. out what you need to achieve is a big advantage so that's your commitment so you somebody can't be waking you up at 5 am it's your commitment now see how it makes a difference so this is what take you in that journey so it has to come from you within yourself from inside out so something i've been meaning to ask and i'm sure the audience is also very curious about is how does how do you manage work as the ceo of two companies while most ceos are busy managing one so this is a common question even my subordinates and my friends ask how do you manage not only that uh, i'm also quite active on linkedin and social media and facebook and on top of it i do yoga and various things on top of it i go to the jungle see a lot of animals which is my hobby i also take holidays so people ask how do you get the time so it's very simple nothing but for me my some of my friends they chase money for me the biggest resource is time if somebody asks what are you chasing for or what is the key resource is time for me time is gone is gone and whether you are rich or poor we all have 24 hours and our life is ticking so my time management definition nathila is b to c so people ask is it machang is it from breakfast to dinner i say no birth to death it's a journey of time management birth to death we have 24 hours what we need to do in our life we need to do within that so it's all about time management so to answer your question each day i wake up nathila to do 20 things in my calendar but my 24 hours doesn't allow because if i start focusing on doing 20 things 10 things will go for tomorrow which will lead against the priority i choose the most needed important not urgent and priority the important and not urgent things the priority list i tick those 5 to 6 and do a b when the rest of the world do five things and say i'm done for the day i focus to do seven things because when you become efficient right in your time management so you can pick and choose your time now for example i may schedule all my calls while driving not when i'm getting ready in the morning i put my calls off if i answer that call that eat my time right so i i you won't believe i i now i stop looking at my mobile phone while having coffee because i go to into social media whatsapp that kills my time and that delays my day so little little tips like that time management tips so a put your list what you need to do tick off the priority do only what are results giving areas or what is important in your life what is good for 5 years do that today don't wait don't be ad hoc person and all those time wasters take it out so if you can manage I I will see you will have a lot of time in your hand that's why I still go have time to go to the jungle still I have time to go to go on holidays and uh, do all that so I feel if you manage it well and also if you have the right team uh to do things which is since you asked about two companies how I manage so if you have the right managers the right team in your organization who know what to do so I need not micromanage go behind and say keep checking things which is another time waste Uh, if i have the right team then you can achieve and uh, managing whatever the task isn't impossible and one achieving a dream in the life span because we may live for 60 years 70 years 80 years 90 years nothing is impossible if you manage your time well and the time start from the day you are born 
right? Yeah. I always say the clock is ticking. ticking while talking to you, talking to you. Twenty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine seconds, forty seconds. The time is clicking. Time is moving. Wow. Uh, we I have a question here from yeah. uh, Bhim Sir uh, Gimshan. So, as per your knowledge and experience, what's the best method to influence people? One is communicate. You need to communicate. Open up your mouth or whatever way you are to communicate, and also you have to give the reason why. A lot of time we are unable to influence someone else because they don't know why you have to do. It. Now, for example. I have to influence you to stop this program. I'm saying Nathila, I'm going off. You may be saying, "Hey, sir, so, and then you agree to speak, and you are going off." But say, I give the reason why. I say, Nathila, I'm giving a bad example here. Nathila, my little child had a fall. She's bleeding. I had to rush to hospital. May I leave now? Aren't you more convinced with the second than the first? Yeah. Right. When I say bluntly, you may wonder why. So that's the biggest mistake we did. We are aggressive and not assertive. Assertiveness give reason why you have to do. So if you have to influence, be it the elders, your atamma or achiyamma, be it your children, be it your peers, be it your boss, be it your subordinate. When you assertiveness, if you follow assertively and give reason why you have to do, and the other party buys in the reason to do, and if he's convinced, influence him become very easy. The problem is we choose the aggressive method. We don't tell why. We say do that, do this like a commando, and they feel why should I do? So if you're influencing, give the reason why, motivate them, and there should be a reason why, and that why can't be for me. That why should be for him as well. the boy should be for him as well so once that is understood it's very easy uh, for uh, to get your things going we have another comment uh, the main fact yes. is leadership for your statement earlier yes time okay so that's how you influence people i think i can use Absolutely. that as well with my father <laughs> exactly you tell why see you asking for something say you asking for apple computer he will say son here aragale time my no increment can't do. but you go and tell tati i am doing this program i need clarity i need a fast machine i need this amount of gp i need a quality yeah and quality absolutely then he will say hey he is asking for the reason so then asking for nothing when you give the reasons 10 at least three of them are top convincing point then he will say without you hey son i'm waiting for my bonus moment i get the bonus i'm you are getting that apple latest uh, mac to you hmm. that's how you influence so that that's why you need to be for you as well as for him and a good compelling reason and if that reason is for your benefit for country's benefit societal benefit then you have a whole clan you you do certain things for the whole community then you are becoming a influential leader Now that's how you influence, and silently you're becoming a leader. We have a thank you from the yeah. Thank you, sir. Great explanation. I'll be sure to use that technique. <laughs> yeah. So, what advice can you give to someone in sales who is trying to become a CEO or a director, or trying to get into a management level in the future? So, don't keep selling for rest of your life. While you are a salesman, think of progressing. What are your next step? Sales. My supervisor. How should I become a supervisor? How should I? Can I become a sales manager? how can i become a, a senior manager director dgm so look at the career growth what it takes so some of the problem in sales is you don't study or you don't believe in your academic qualification because when you are in sales your finance become a, a blind spot so for me when i was in medical rep one of the biggest uh, to become a ceo one of the needed knowledge was finance which i got through my mba so i to study that i purposely went to university of peradeniya a i was i never went to a state university so i wanted to go to a state university and do my mba a but the blessing in disguise was uh, by going there uh, it was like a classroom none of the mbas today if you see most of them in the private sector today uh, doesn't allow you to match the profit and loss to the cent you have to do your balance sheet you have to do your cash flow so i learned my finance so coming back to the question that you asked if you are a salesman look at what are the blind spot area the finance knowledge the strategy knowledge or the business strategy the legal side of it the business law study those through academic qualification get prepared what is your career path keep moving so don't get stuck and say this is the end if you want to progress see what things needed and keep adapting so it depends on one's career path and and uh, everybody can rise up to the top based on the need based on the objective or based on the dream one may have so Uh, actually i noticed that you are also a toast master right yes yes what advice can you give to uh, kids you know the younger generation as someone who is a toast master you know okay so toast master mainly absolutely so the main reason why i joined here toast masters is toast masters has only two objective which is linked to leadership toast master only two arms a to communicate b leadership leadership means there are small small little little subtle role which you think you are good at but when you play that role you learn a lot 
so in a toastmaster meeting you may be a timer you may be a counter uh, or you may be the president of the meeting you may be the toastmaster hosting the event there are little little roles so sometimes you feel hey, it's nothing much but when you do it you know what the preparation you got to do how you handle which may help you in your practical or the official life most important aspect of toastmaster is the communication one is the fear of speaking a lot of people fear public speaking so toastmaster take it away be communicate the very key thing what help me in a toastmaster is more than what you say how you say matters now see i'm bringing my tone down more than what you say how you say i reduce my tone toastmaster taught me or oh, i become very aggressive and go loud which gives you a punch toastmaster taught so it's very important people look at the content and learn only 30% but how you say impacts a person 70% this include influencing people so delivering a sad message i have to get into the sober mood so toastmasters teach that so what helped me the youngsters to get early so if you are a leader or leadership if you want to embark yourself in a leadership journey communication important leadership is important toastmasters is a good platform taking through you that syllabus or taking you through that pathway and it's fun learning it's not like going to another lecture or another exercise it's fun learning so that fun environment teach these two things subtly and that helped me so i think since 2008 i was a toastmaster and that helped me in my leadership journey uh, especially in how to say and in toastmaster another good quick example i can share is you get this impromptu speaking so people saying they call they give a topic and speak for 2 minutes so you got to speak off the cuff i mean when you go to the board meeting it's the same a board director ask a question you don't know what he's going to ask impromptu speaking right you got to think off the cuff and respond see how it helps so this is how a toastmaster can help a youngster or anyone uh, it's a, it's a good platform to help someone hmm. and now i also heard that you are a yoga teacher and that you practice yes. daily i Every myself do i myself have done yoga since i was a little kid about weekly two or three years now i've been doing yoga not as much as you probably but just a little bit so uh, how did you become you know how did you become a yoga teacher okay so it started like this i told you at the age of 40 i became a ceo at uh, Uh, delmage which was bought by valleyball and there my main objective was turning a loss entity to to profit not only me the whole group was running at a loss and when valleyball purchased mr damika parra being the chairman if i may mention the name wanted that uh, entity to run profitable so it was very stressful so we had a chairman i would mention the name chanda de silva whom i am grateful even today i take pride and privilege to mention his name he found his ceos like me who was stressful and towards the board meeting we all get stressed so he thought i need to bring a yoga guru and let me start once a week so there was a 3 months once a week session at delmage so i went for that like a keen student and i found the benefit when i did yoga i found i'm more relaxed and i found some difference so anyway that program stopped at delmage for 3 months but i found out who this guru is and i would mention his name as well miss uh, yoga siromani titus which ratna is my yoga guru he was conducting classes at avlocks so i started going there so again i was going once a week twice a week and that was in 2014 and then i found uh, it increased i started doing on my own and during covid during the lockdown uh, we had no choice no going on the road no jogging nothing I thought I may become unhealthy and I was also worried about covid virus if it hit me how am I to increase I know for a fact if I do yoga that's going to increase my immunity and yeah. during the lockdown that 53 days believe me mithila I started doing every day every day morning 6 o'clock or 5:30 in the morning I got up and started doing yoga now that became a habit then I got the taste of it then I thought hey I'm enjoying this I need to give back to this society so that became the thing then i started i want to give back i called my colleagues and started doing yoga session free at independence square and then i thought if somebody asked me hey what right you got to teach others you are not a teacher you can do then i thought i need to go spend one month in the ashram spending 300 hours which was last year november spent a good 3 months uh, got myself accredited as a yoga teacher simply to teach back this good thing in life mm-hmm. uh, and that's where i adopted yoga and i'm enjoying it uh, believe me netal i do 3 classes a uh, week and today morning i did it's a totally free session today on sundays for example i do it at hindu cultural hall every week and i come to candy and i that i dedicate on behalf of my parents uh, i do a free session from 7 to 8:30 i mean you wanted to do this session early i said i have to do that and come back the reason is that and today a good 20 members were there so happy completely free because i got the venue free 
So I give it back and that's my satisfaction giving back because it's a, something good to give back to the society. Hmm. I think we have a question here. Yes, from Kasun Dhananjay. I would like to ask you about your DBA journey. Okay. So as I told, I started as a medical rep at age of 19. I didn't have any uh, educational qualification. And also my parents were all graduates. A. B. People also found because uh, to another tell another personal story in Ethila is that I, I started my love affair early in life. I started at 17, got married at 22, 23. I had my son. So today I have a son at 28 years. So people at one point were thinking, hey, he is involved in those things. And that's why he didn't study. And then one day one could blame even my girlfriend then who is my wife now. Hey, it's because is it because of her? He didn't study. All those things were running in my mind. So I made an objective. I would achieve the pinnacle of academic qualification one day. And if you take the educational hierarchy, doctorate is the highest. Of course, I could have done my PhD, but for me, DBA, after my MBA, DBA was more relevant. So like becoming a CEO, that was one of my objectives before retirement. I set myself a target. Before I retire, I'm going to get my doctorate. So I did. During COVID 2019, I started and I completed. That was an objective that I had in my mind. But MBA was more of a learning. Before DBA, I did my MBA. That was to help my career. So MBA helped me to do my career better. And it helps me to do my uh, uh, the CEO life, as I told, especially the finance, the business law, all that learning in the MBA helped. But DBA was just to achieve and say, hey, not only I grow myself in my career, even in my academic qualification achieve. So one day, no regrets. Starting at 19 years, I have no regrets. Uh, starting my love life at 17, no regrets. Marrying at 22 years, no regrets. Uh, having my son at 23, no regrets. Uh, so nothing to blame and nobody no can regrets. blame. And no regrets at all. All happy for what I've done. And, and my only thing to do is to give back as much as possible. That's the only thing I focus now. So uh, we've reached the last two questions that I want to ask. But uh, first one I'll ask is, what advice do you have for parents to help them raise their kids to become successful? So as parents, uh, a I mean, at different age, you got to do different things. Don't spoon feed. Of course, I also, uh, Molly Cordula, spoon feed my children because uh, for me, my father was a government servant, but for my children, I'm a CEO. They are CEO's children. So they live in that comfort zone. So expose them, teach them, uh, let them figure out their vision. I mean, for example, if I'm a marketeer, that doesn't mean my son should be in marketing. For example, if I'm a doctor, that doesn't mean my son has to be a doctor because sons wish son's strengths may be something else and more than the strength he should do what he likes so let them take their decision allow them to take their decision support from behind don't drive your ideas or your dreams to them come on you live your life let them live theirs so as parents i would say support from behind guide them from behind let them take their leadership role and take their decision and move on so that will be my number one advice for parents so uh, one last question final one so one last message that you could give for the younger generation watching this possibly okay so if it's kids i would say have that dream have that passion and get things early on in life when you said the intro natila if i take you as an example you have your own brand cinnamon chat and you said you're the founder ceo so a ceo can become at 14 why do you want to become a ceo at 40 like me Right. I became a CEO at 40. You became a CEO at 14. So it's possible. Nothing is impossible. So think out of the box. So this is one method. I don't know. What's your objective? Your objective could be to network, maybe to share knowledge among your friends, bring knowledge into the platform. You would have had multiple objectives, but you're doing something like that. So if you can do at 14 years, people at 40 need not struggle, but your life can start at 14. Your life can start at 64. So the, my biggest uh, message for the children is don't wait. Don't grumble. Today, people are cursing Sri Lanka, finding excuse with Sri Lanka, blaming. If you blame, wherever you go, you will blame. You go to Canada, you will blame. You go to Australia, you will blame. You go to Finland, you will blame. Person who tell find fault will always find fault. I will always say a person who has who will find the solution in every problem will find a solution and a person who find the problem will find a problem in every solution. So whether you are an optimist or pessimist is up to you. So being a young kid, don't, don't find fault. Don't keep complaining, find a way, move out because there are so much of opportunity out there. Nothing is impossible. So Nithila is a good example. I would like to take in this case right in front of you. So if you can do it, I mean, there are so many ways. So this is just an example of one platform. There are so many you can do, figure out and do. 
and then go to greener pastures right so opportunities are high and today it's not sri lanka it's a global village shrunk into a small village the entire world is your opportunity and to connect the world you need not go and get out of the country i mean you'll log on to internet you're connected to rest of the world where you stay it's immaterial anymore guys people asking should i be here should i be there it doesn't matter anymore where you stay because today it's a global village the globe is your entire target market where you stay where you sleep it doesn't matter so you can do whatever you want so i want this give this positive message to all the kids the opportunities are immense 6 billion is your opportunity go there connect digitally move on uh, life is wonderful and enjoy life and be happy do things which you enjoy in your life so that happiness motivate you to do more and more so that will be my message uh, nitila okay so first of all i would like to thank you very much sir for taking your time you know i know you have a lot of work to do being two ceos and again you managed to manage your time to make time for this interview again time is ticking you took 44 minutes of your time to be here and teach us about how to become successful and your life story and how we can influence uh, how we get influenced by that oh, comment here from you thank you nitila for hosting the insightful conversation you're welcome thank you very much for tuning in and thank you dr sayanthan for sharing these golden words sure thank you so thank you very much sir for taking your precious time to come here and teach me and the audience and the younger generation watching this and thank you audience for tuning in so thank with you. that we will end the stream thank you sure thanks